There are certain themes that often provoke lively discourse between photographers. Tripods, lens hoods, camera bags, how much processing is too much, autofocus rivalry, analog versus digital is just a few of them. But lately, the subject of masking has dominated the busier photographic subreddits, DP review threads and Discord servers, with Adobe Lightroom owners inevitably pouring derision upon the non-Adobe users. There's no doubt that Lightroom has the most powerful and flexible masking toolkit in the game, but it's specifically those AI masks that users of Capture One and DxO Photo Lab seem to cover the most. But are Capture One and Photolab users actually better off without them? Are those fancy AI masks really all they're cracked up to be? Should the sky, landscape, subject, vegetation, natural ground and the rest of the AI gang always be the first masking tool we reach for? I put it to you that particularly for landscape photography, they might be doing more harm than good and a more nuanced approach is desirable. Sometimes, my friends, the smartest tool in your post-processing kit is still the one between your ears. There's no doubt at all that Lightroom's masking tools provoke envy in users of other apps. Scroll through the support forums and you'll find complaints about how good the accursed Adobe users have it. And it's true that Lightroom's AI masks, particularly when used in conjunction with that intersect option, are bloody awesome. They are not perfect. Far from it, but they do offer a sense of control that is highly addictive and which promises a seamless and brisk post processing workflow. But here's the problem the real world cannot be so neatly classified and quantified. Photography is all about the light, and light is a gradient, not a jigsaw. When we place rigid boundaries around elements in a landscape, we're in danger of creating a photograph that ceases to look natural, looks over-processed or takes on a kind of HDR look. When we neatly ring-fence a portion of a photograph, such as the sky, we are applying an artificially constructed barrier that works in opposition to the way light and colour functions in the real world. It's a distraction that your edits could probably do without. Allow me to demonstrate what I mean in Lightroom. As the saying goes, there are no straight lines in nature. I would further add to that by saying that there are no neat boundaries in nature. And unfortunately, AI masks create very definite boundary lines. They have to. How else is the machine learning going to know what is and isn't the thing you're defining, the sky or the tree or the person and whatever it is. And in some kinds of photography, that's bloody useful. If you're doing sort of portrait photography or product photography, then being able to quickly target just that thing, that person or that object is useful. But it, in nature, and for landscape photographers, I'd say it was very different. I'd say that having those clearly defined boundaries makes your photographs look kind of HDR, looks a little bit fake, looks a bit unnatural. Light doesn't respect boundaries. It flows across them. The light from the sky in this photograph isn't just stopping at the horizon line, is it? It's falling across the ocean. It's casting a light on the ocean and on the land. And if I create a sky mask, I'm saying, no, actually, it all stops here. Everything's different. Yeah, I've created two examples for you here. In this first photo, I made one photo with the AI masks, and I've constructed the second one entirely just with linear gradient masks. And on those linear gradient masks, we've got some heavy feathering. I'll show you precisely how that works. So here's our first one. Actually, I'm going to show you the two photos first. So this is the AI one. Notice the strict boundary lines. 
and here's my version, which is just linear gradients. The masks in these have basically the same localized edits on them. Drop the highlights, etc., raising the white point, tiny bit of dehaze for some contrast. But they were constructed completely differently. Let me switch between them again. So here's the AI one. And here's the gradient mask one. I would argue that this second one is far more natural looking. Let's have a wee peek under the hood and go and look at the mask. So this is the AI mask one, and it's pretty simple. I'm sure you know the process. You create a sky mask. That's this big boy here. And you create a land or ocean mask by duplicating and inverting the sky mask. It's easy peasy. The fact that it's so easy is actually the problem because and I'm guilty of this myself. So let's have a little look under the hood of the other one now. So here's the alternate version. And so this has got five masks on it. So the big ones are here. This is the ocean mask. That's where it looks, the sky mask, uh, which as you can see, let me just show you the overlay. And let's stop at the horizon. Look at this. It fe I feathered it across the ocean so that we're getting a combination of effects of lessening degree during that feathered area for the localized edits I want to make to the sky, which is how light and tone is in the real world. Uh, where's my ocean one? It's actually mask five, I think, here. So there's an ocean mask. And as you can see, I pulled that up short of the horizon line. Uh, but it's still got this feather on, so some of the edits I've made will continue up to this point here, this top line. Complement it to finish it off. Uh, I darkened up the top of the sky there, and I just created some vignetting-style masks, just drawing in the edges, just to draw your eye in slightly. If we flip back to library mode, you get a much more natural look. There's my one. There's the kind of very processed-looking AI version. Here's a second example. Same deal. Process the same photo twice. One using almost exclusively AI masks and one using just no AI masks or just the traditional masks. So here's the one with the AI processing and here's the one with the natural filters on it. And as I'm sure you can read, it just looks more natural. It's flipped back. There's the AI one. Notice this piece of light here on the horizon. And if we look at the other shot, much more natural way that the, the light is looking in that image. Again, let's have a little peek under the hood. I think I was a bit more helpful with me mask naming on this one. Yeah, cool. So same deal. We've got a sky mask here. Let's turn the overlay on. Notice the incredibly strict boundary line. And then we've got a land mask, like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. And then just so it didn't look completely different to the other shot, I actually brushed in a vignette with a heavy feathered edge on it. Just drop the exposure down, just draws the eye in. But I added it to the AI example in this demonstration because it just looked too different. And I didn't want you guys to get distracted from the overall look of the image. AI natural version let's have a peek at the brushes on the traditionally masked version and so firstly we've got a sky mask now with this one check it out huge feather on it so there's the kind of cut point effectively but it's feathered all the way here so the effects of applied to that which is a drop in highlights in this case and drop the dehaze slightly just add some haze back into it diminishes across that feather line looks lovely and there's the land mask which is the same kind of deal big mask starts right down the bottom feathers slowly up across the horizon line and into the sky then i stuck a sky darkening linear gradient on there here's the vignette and just for good measure i stuck a little radial gradient in the middle Bump the horizon up very slightly, drop the highlights a bit, just to accentuate that vignette even more. I just love the way that the light looks, how different it is, how much more natural it looks at this uh, demarcation point here where the, the bushland gives way to the sky. 
compare the natural version to the AI version. And as I said before, they basically got the same edits on them, these masks. The Sky mask has the same local adjustments on it as the linear gradient Sky mask I applied in the other image. But look how different it is. It's just not natural looking. This is lovely. The natural light fall off uh, the way the effects diminish across those heavily feathered gradients is mwah, chef's kiss. Now, there's no reason at all why you can't use a combination of AI and traditional masks to achieve a nuanced and natural look. But I would argue that AI masks are the enemy of realism in landscape photography. AI segmentation forces gradients into discrete buckets, which usually means halos, blown transitions, and, if you're not careful, color banding. There are transition zones between the natural elements in a landscape photograph that AI cannot see, but which we can, whether we're consciously aware of them or not. If you're a keen photographer, then it's highly likely you have an ND grad filter or two in your camera bag, and you use it to subtly darken the sky. And linear gradient masks are, of course, basically mimicking those physical ND grad filters. To keep this video under 25 minutes, I've demonstrated examples using gradient masks, but you can, of course, use luminosity and hue or color range masks to achieve a similarly nuanced effect. For a fiddly edit, when the sky is masked by the branches of a tree, an AI sky mask in Lightroom might not even be the best option. Colour or luminosity is almost certainly going to look cleaner and generate fewer boundary issues. For portrait, product and perhaps even wildlife photography, I think there is an argument for the convenience and speed of an AI-generated subject mask. But photographing the natural world and its landscapes is very different. So if you are a landscape photographer and you've been thinking about moving away from Adobe and onto something like Photolab, but resisted because you'd heard the masks weren't as good, then I hope I have given you some food for thought. AI masks have their place and there's a lot to be said for their speed and convenience for certain edits but they can make us lazy and make our post-processing artificial looking. Sometimes the most intelligent edit is knowing when to tell the artificial intelligence to bugger off. And that will do us for this look at the downsides to AI masks for landscape photographers. Are you a hardcore Lightroom AI masking advocate? Or do you take the middle road and mix and match your masks? Do let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, then do please give it a like in order to prod the YouTube algorithm in my direction. If you got value from this content, then please consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video, and drone-related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.